there is one great discipline within the data space that not everyone can master. But once you do, you possess data superpower. What if I told you that we can unleash your power to do any data transformation that you desire? What would you build? Welcome back to our product deep dive. I'm your host, Johannes, product growth manager here at Y42. And today I will walk you through our modeling layer. Data modeling is a very important, but not such an easy step of the process. It is the step you take to arrange raw data into meaningful tables to enable analyses, reports, and visualizations. Basically, during the transformation process, you turn raw data into human usable metrics. If you're new here and you're wondering how Y42 can help you achieve this, well, we're an end-to-end -end data platform that enables you to either model your data via drag and drop or through writing your own SQL queries. We cover the entire data process from integrations to modeling to orchestration as well as visualizations and automations. And we do this on top of your data warehouse. So the data is always yours and it's always secure. But today, let's take a deeper look at how we build a model with Y42. Before we dive in, let me tell you what we are actually doing today. Just like in our last video, we're still pretending to be a data analyst building a report for the marketing team. But this time, we're not integrating data like last time. In today's video, you will learn how our modeling layer looks like, what it has to offer, and then I will show you how you can clean your Google Ads data. First, we'll select and rename our columns. Then we'll normalize the data. And as the third step, we will merge two data sources together. By the end of the video, you will know how to build a model that showcases daily ad spend for the marketing team in two platforms, Google and Facebook. In a future video, I will then show you how we can visualize the table that we create today. We've got lots of ground to cover, so let's jump into our platform and get started with adding a new model. So let us start by adding a new model. And we have the choice between a SQL and a UI model. They are the same in terms of the power they have. But in the SQL model, you get to write your own SQL queries. And in the UI model, you can access our no and low code interface using drag and drop nodes. But under the hood, we write the SQL queries for you. Today, we will select the UI model and give it a name. For this, we recommend using standardized naming conventions because this will facilitate common understanding and maintenance in your team, especially if there's multiple people working on these models. Consistent and explicit names are the way to go. So if you're building a model to clean your Google Ads campaigns data, then the name would end up looking something like this. If you want to learn more about our naming convention best practices, I will link you a very useful guide in the section below. Let's take a look around. We have many different nodes here that will allow you to transform your data. And I will walk you through some of them as a part of this video. But enough of exploration. Let's actually start to build a model. And we will just drag and drop the input node onto our modeling canvas and use this to connect data from different sources. You can add as many input nodes as you need and you can connect data from different sources using the join or union nodes, but we'll show you this in a second. For now, let's focus on a single data source and walk you through the data cleaning process. So let's dive into our input node and select the Google Ads data that we had previously imported. A super useful functionality here is the output preview, which allows you to preview the data that this node will output and basically use as the input for the next node that's upcoming in the model. So in this case, we will just save because we know that this is the data we would like. We will now use our fields node to rename columns and match the naming conventions that we have established internally within our team. Why would you rename your columns though? Well, we're merging Google Ads data with some Facebook Ads data. And you want to look at the cost of your ads per day, but Google names the column showing how much you spent as cost and Facebook names it as amount spent. Merging both columns would be easier if they both had the same name. And it's 
good to have consistent naming conventions for your columns because you will always encounter the situation where different tools name the same information in different ways. So for the sake of company-wide understandings of your models, you should always decide on how you want to name your columns. So let's keep cleaning our data. So let's start cleaning our data and jump right into our field zone. Here you can see all the columns that we get as an input into this model. And I would suggest we start by selecting only the columns that we actually need for our use case. In this case, it's cost and day, but you can see that those column names don't match our naming conventions. So we're gonna rename the cost column as spend and the day column as date. So if we now jump into the output preview, we can see how we only have the two columns that we selected and those columns have been renamed. You can see that the date column is still in a text format. However, we would like this to be in a date format. So in order to do that, we will use our date parser to turn this into a date format. And we will start by selecting our source column, which is the date itself. And we can see that this format is day day, month month, and year year, as you can see here in the input preview. So we'll just go ahead and define the target column as date, super simple, and preview the output. And as you can see, the power of Y42's UI modeling layer has enabled us to change this from a text to a date column. And now we have the full power of a date column unleashed. But you can see that our spend column looks slightly odd. It looks like we spent 240,000 euros on ads only on the 2nd of March, 2021. That can't be right. So we found out that Google provides their ad spend in 1 millionth euro. So we actually need another transformation to happen here. And I'll show you how that works just in a second. In order to do this, we use our functions node and we will divide the spend by 1 million to normalize this number. We will select spend as the target column since we want to replace the data within that column with our calculation head. And you might recognize this from Excel because this is our low code layer and it's very easy to use for anyone that's only slightly familiar with Excel. So we can preview this in the output preview and we can see that our spend looks a little bit more realistic than before. Usually after this note, we would be done with the data cleaning process and add the output note to finish up this whole sequence. However, since we're still merging this data with Facebook ads data, we just need one other step. Since we're putting together data from two different platforms, we're going to introduce a new column called platform. We do this within our functions node by adding a new function. And in this case for the Google data, just name it Google because that is the platform this data comes from. And we can again check the output preview and see that for every row, we now have Google uh, within the column platform. We're going to save this and now bring this together with our Facebook data. Okay, so our Google Ads data is clean and ready to go. We will now follow the same steps for our Facebook Ads data. And once we're done cleaning that second source, we will finally put both of them together. So I've already prepared the Facebook data and cleaned it before recording this video. So in this case, we will just make use of the power of Y42 and select another input node. And in this case, select the output of my Facebook ads cleaning model as the input for this model. And you can see that we have already cleaned this data. We have the date column in the right format. It's named spend and date and we have the platform column as well. So we're just gonna save this and basically now reuse the model that we've previously created. In order to connect two or more tables in Y42, we have two functions to choose from, union and join as we have mentioned before. But how do you know which one to use? Well, you can use the union when you have similar tables with the same type of columns and you want to have the data of both or all tables in a unified place. Or you can use the join when you want to merge data from multiple tables based on common identifiers or key values. 
We've linked a post below explaining the key differences between these two a bit further. So can you guess which one we need to use in our particular use case? You might have guessed it. In this case, we use our union node to bring those tables together. So we enter the union node and here check our input data and we can see that actually all our columns are following the same naming convention. This allows us to use the automatic uh, column matching and we can actually preview the output now and see that these tables have been unionized. We have on the one hand the Google ad spend and we have the Facebook ad spend which we can filter on now. Let's save this because this is actually exactly the output we're looking for. Now that we have the data that we need, we will use the output node to create the final table which we would like to see as the output of this model. In this case, we're going to select all the columns. We can do another preview of our data that we're going to output here. But in this case, I'm just going to save and go ahead. So looking at our modeling canvas now, you might see that it's slightly messy and not fully aligned. So let's click on Align Nodes to make this nice and beautiful. In addition, I would like to let the marketing team know how we actually created this model. And our very useful Canvas sidebar helps us with annotating this model and making it understandable for everyone that's going to revisit it. So I will use a sticky note to let them know that the Facebook ad spend comes from a previous model. Now that we've cleaned the data and unioned the different tables as well as annotated the model, we are actually done with the data modeling process and just need to commit the changes. So we're just going to give it a commit title. In this case, it's the version one of this model. And we're actually done with the data modeling process. So this was just a little taste of what our modeling layer can do for you. Do you want to know more about how we can help you unleash your modeling superpowers? We offer access control so that only the right users can see and work with your models so that the most sensitive data is protected. We also have version control so that you can make all changes with confidence. And our tool enables you to closely monitor your models, alerts you in case anything goes wrong, and allows you to easily debug your models. At the same time, you can preview your data at each step of the transformation, as I've just shown you. If you want to learn more about how you could model your own data in Y42 and how it can be adapted to your particular use case, don't be shy. and book a call with one of our data experts. They will gladly clear out any doubts and questions that you might have now. And if you want to learn about data modeling best practices, check out our data modeling guide below. It's written by our very own solution engineers. That's it this time around. See you on the next episode. Are you ready to see how we visualize data in Y42? Stay tuned. See ya.